What's up, Taiwan? How's it going? I'm Ethan Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Tour companies say the latest rules easing restrictions on travelers entering Taiwan aren't enough to help revive their flagging industry. From September, tourists from the U.S., Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Europe, and diplomatic allies can enter the country visa-free, but they must still quarantine and take saliva tests. John Ben Trist reports. Taiwan is starting to come out of its COVID isolation. After more than two years, tourists from a range of countries will be let back in visa-free. But Taiwan's travel agents have doubts about how much this will do to boost business. Also of concern, the list of visa-exempt nationalities. The countries on the list are largely Western. These countries only accounted for around 10% of visitors in 2019. Bigger markets like Japan are not on the list. And then there's the fact that the policy excludes tour groups. The government's tourism bureau is eager to open Taiwan up, but it says expert advice must take precedence. Which means the tourism industry's recovery may not be as quick as some had hoped. Chris Ma and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan has announced the slogan and logo for this year's National Day celebrations. As usual, the release triggered a nationwide discussion online. Yu Jinghuang reports. National Day falls on October 10th in Taiwan. Each year, the government unveils a theme and logo to go with the festivities. This year's theme, just announced, is defending the nation together. This focus on military matters is a departure from the past few years, which have emphasized democracy and pride. The color scheme for this year's logo is also a sign of the times. An image circulating online shows how the designs have changed since 2016, when the Democratic Progressive Party took power. There is also controversy over the choice by the organizers to use the term Taiwan National Day, when the country's official name is the Republic of China. The opposition Kuomintang says the government is using the design to push Taiwan independence. But many people online say the design is one of the most attractive in recent years. And designers say that the concept for this year's logo is Taiwan's land. The celebrations are open to all, regardless of political affiliation. There will be 10,000 seats at the ceremony up from 6,000 last year, part of a relaxation of COVID rules. There will also be a special performance by a Japanese high school band, marking 50 years since unofficial ties between Taiwan and Japan were formalized. Dignitaries aside, it's not yet clear who will be allowed to be in the audience for the ceremony. But one possibility is that a committee will hold an online drawing for seats. Damon Ling and Yu Jun Huang for Taiwan Plus. Efforts are underway to have Mazu's Da Chou Island certified as an international dark sky park. This means receiving recognition for the quality of its starry night skies. Bing Wang has more details. During the day, many Taiwanese tourists go to Mazu's Da Chou Islands to see a sea deer. But at night, the island transforms into an excellent spot for stargazing. Taiwan's Dark Sky Association is attempting to get Dacho certified as an international dark sky park, which means it has an exceptional night sky and nocturnal environment. 
but they must meet some standards first. Most important is the quality of the night sky. 好，我们现在的数值呢是二十点出头哈。那距离的安魂公园的平均标准二十一点二还是有一段距离。Also, between the months of June and October, the night sky is marred by green lights flashing from Chinese fishing vessels. 现在云层很低，所以呢，对岸的陆基的或者是渔船的光线呢，会经过这个云层的反射，这个叫散射。Lights from nearby islands also have an impact. 那比如说我们岛上的路灯，它村子里面晚上产生的一些光源，它一样会在水汽比较稍微旺盛的时候，透过云气的这样子的一个水分子的一个漫射，反射到我们大邱岛上。The nearby islands are working towards lowering the light pollution. Members of the Taiwan Dark Sky Association visit the island every month to assess the quality of the sky. They hope to receive certification as an international dark sky park soon. Patrick Chen and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. The longest tunnel in Taiwan is getting a trial lighting makeover for the upcoming Mid-Autumn Festival weekend. Officials say the new adjustable mood lighting in Xueshan Tunnel will help combat visual fatigue for drivers and improve road safety at one of the year's busiest periods for traffic. Xueshan Tunnel connects the capital Taipei to Taiwan's east coast, stretching 13 kilometers through Taiwan's central mountain range. While officials are excited for the new lights, some critics worry that rapid changes in light could affect people with epilepsy. Mid-Autumn Festival is around the corner. It's a harvest celebration observed in many parts of Asia and is held during what is traditionally thought of as the roundest and brightest full moon of the year. And there's one traditional Chinese dessert that the festival wouldn't be complete without. Sandy Chi takes us to a local bakery in Taipei where the queues are stretching around the block. I'm here in Taipei at a very famous local bakery. It's almost an autumn festival, and the shop has been here for more than 100 years. As you can see, the queue is massive. Let's take a look at why they are here. Now, this lady next to me has been here for almost two hours. Hi there, can you tell me what is so special about these mooncakes, and what are you here for? Um, the queues here stretch more than two blocks down the road. The bakery says their mooncakes are so in demand, the shop allows customers pre-order two months in advance. So when customer is lining up, our factory is like busy with hundreds of people making mooncakes. So we just keep making it and keep selling it. This brand is founded in 1894. So it's been a long time. So we are very well experienced on making Chinese, traditional Chinese mooncake. And it's, uh, it has to be made by hand, handmade. Uh, you cannot make it by machine. It's going to be taste different, yeah. And the, the ingredients inside, it's mostly it's from Taiwan local uh, agriculture. Mooncakes are a traditional Chinese dessert for the Mid-Autumn Festival. The roundness represents completeness and reunion for the whole family. There are a lot of different kinds of mooncakes, but traditionally they are made with a bean paste and surrounding a duck egg yolk in the middle, which represents the moon. Usually, people come out to see the moon during this festival. However, this year will be difficult because of the cloudy weather. But at least they will still have their mooncakes. Kamashu and Sandy Chi in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, today we leave you with images from the Geneva Natural History Museum. And let's meet Janus. He's the world's oldest two headed tortoise and will turn 25 this coming weekend. I'm Ethan Liu. Take care and see you next time.